Movement mechanics and map design go hand in hand, just like a cold beer and some hot pizza. Both are great on their own, but having both is even better. Psh, I mean, give me a Hefeweizen and a deep dish pie, and man, I'm good to go, to be honest with you. What is up, guys? This is the Mapped Out Gamer here, and welcome to my first Two Cents video. In these videos, I'll be throwing in my two cents regarding different video game design topics and just kind of stuff about first person shooters, more particularly about map design and things like that. Like I mentioned before, let's talk about FPS player movement movement mechanics and how it can drive multiplayer map design for the good and sometimes for the bad. Let's play some first person shooters. With this evolution of player movement mechanics, with things like boosting and thrusting, a lot of room was opened up for map design to thrive as well. We get to see more ambitious layouts, larger scalability, and epic evolution event triggers. These things theoretically should lead to better map flow, extremely dynamic battles, and more of an up-tempo type of pace. Let's look at how verticality is affected by altering movement abilities. Verticality, when it comes to map design, points to how the map flows from top to bottom. With enhanced movements, you'll begin to see these higher obstacles that are normally wouldn't be easily accessible with traditional movement mechanics. With the introduction of the exosuit in Advanced Warfare, we see map verticality take more of a front and center role in map design. The map comeback is a great example of this new type of outlook. With its high ledges and deep circular map flow, comeback was really built to make the exosuit shine. Looking at Battlefield, where you don't get to boost around or thrust or anything like that, you start seeing these gadgets getting introduced that cause a shift in map creation. Maps begin to take shape with taller structures and higher, you know, hotspots become speedily accessible due to the zipline and grappling hook gadgets. The map bank job takes advantage of these gadgets with structures like multi-level parking garages, which opens up for more frequent rooftop battle scenarios. On top of the exosuit boosting, Advanced Warfare actually doubles down on enhanced movement by introducing the grapple ability. This was in the Havoc DLC. A perfect pairing to go with this new ability was the map Perplex. Perplex, with its ambitious, you know, king of the hill type of layout, not only exemplifies exo boosting, but exo grappling as well. Unfortunately, gameplay on this map really just devolves into a jumping, boosting, and grappling circus rather quickly. This is basically movement mechanics on steroids. It's a good example of it. A newer movement mechanic that's affecting map design is underwater movement. Traditionally, FPS players avoid water anywhere they see it like the plague, but Black Ops 3 is looking to change that perspective. With the new ability to fight underwater, we'll begin to see maps that will have lucrative underwater routes and maybe even water-themed maps. I'm really anxious to see what multiplayer maps uh, Black Ops 3 brings to the table. So in conclusion, a hallmark of design is that form always follows function. If we apply that perspective in this scenario, this basically means that the functioning player movement mechanics will always take the wheel while the form of map design rides a long sitting shotgun. Adding more and more movement mechanics is great and all, but does it actually make the game more fun? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below or feel free to hit me up on Twitter at MappedOutGamer. Peace.